welcome to another Monday of Squadcast Glory. I'm Camille Salazar Hadaway. <laughs> Joining me is Aaron Caboose Coast. We have uh, Steve Vagvari and Malik Shelp. Uh, boys, welcome. How are you guys feeling this Monday? Fantastic. Good. 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 Fantastic. I love that. I feel like that is Steve's signature. Fantastic. <laughs> Fan it's fantastic. Uh, for those of you at home that don't know, uh, Caboose and I, we are the regulars, but we do like to bring some friends on the squad cast to talk all things nerdy. So it's great having uh, Malik and Steve with us, our writers actually on our website, squadstate.com. And we'll be bringing in more writers because we have experts and I feel like every single category on the website how do you guys find uh working with the team on there you guys are like all experts no that's exactly it. i think yeah. we all kind of just mesh well together bringing our uh specific insights on uh, different corners of the industry together it's really cool yeah and everyone everyone's opened my eyes to a lot of different cool mm. things and like niches too because everybody covers something and then they have their niche that they like and so yeah. learning about everyone's own niche gaming you know trends are cool yeah, it is. So what would you guys say is your two niches or one niche each of you? Uh, I don't know. I, I really like first person shooters. That's always my go to. Yeah. Four yeah. X games, I would say, like Sid Meier's. Those mm. kind. Yeah. I feel like Caboose, it's like anything superhero. I, I yeah. feel like that's your is that your brand? Is that your brand? It <laughs> might be. <laughs> if I had to I guess. Might... I might find an excuse to talk about it every single week, potentially. Yeah, yeah, it's literally every single week, and that that doesn't mean we're not we're not saved here this week because we're going to be talking about some superheroes as well. We're going to start off first talking about cyberpunk crunch culture. We'll go into Kabuza's favorite Spider Man remastered, the Parker swap. We're going to be talking about Steve uh, being revealed for Smash Brothers, uh, which is really interesting, and Genshin Impact and the rise of Triple A. Uh, games from china so uh let's kick things off uh with cyberpunk crunch culture and remember chat you have all the topics that we're going to be talking about so let us know let your voice be heard and yeah. remember if you have any great clips while we are squad casting tweet us at squad state all right let's kick off the show uh you guys taking this one steve yeah yeah i would love to um <laughs> Uh, so to catch people up, last week, uh, Bloomberg's Jason Schreier reported that uh, CD Projekt Red, the developer for Cyberpunk 2077, uh, told the members of its studio that it's going to be entering a mandatory crunch period uh, leading up to its release on November 19th. Uh, the studio had Adam uh, Badowski, I believe, uh, wrote the email uh, to the studio informing them of the crunch. Uh, saying, uh, quote, starting today, the entire development studio is in overtime. Uh, he later went on to say, quote, I, I take it upon myself to receive the full backlash for the, this decision. I know that this is in direct opposition to what we've said about crunch. Uh, it's also in direct opposition to what I personally grew to believe a while back, that crunch should never be the answer. Uh, but we've extended all other possible means of navigating the situation. Um, yeah, leading into the development of Cyberpunk, CD Projekt Red has been adamant of not doing crunch in the past, uh, speaking to various media outlets over the development. Uh, he said that crunch would not be a factor, but unfortunately, it's kind of coming to a head now. Uh, we're almost like a month away from its release. Um, yeah. it, it is worth noting that uh, the CD Projekt Red employees uh, will receive a bonus payout of 10% of the company's annual profits. Yeah. Uh, analysts estimate that CD uh, PR's net income will rise to uh, 500 and 20 million in 2020. And then this morning, uh, CD Projekt Red confirmed that Cyberpunk 2077 has officially gone gold. Yeah. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, going gold means uh, it's past certification on platforms like Xbox, PlayStation. Uh, so right now, it kind of seems that the studio will be working six day work weeks to iron out those last minute bugs and glitches. Uh, of course, with any AAA game that releases the topic of crunch, always seems to pop up. Um, CDPR is usually a pretty transparent uh, development studio, but again, it, it kicks off this conversation of 
crunch culture and what it means of uh, developing these large, uh, huge games. Uh, so mm -hmm. I just wanted to open up this uh, panel um, discussion on, I I'm sure we all can agree crunch is really bad uh, all around, but uh, what are your thoughts on crunch and the crunch culture yeah. associated with that? I mean, no, there's no doubt about it. Like you said, nobody, nobody looks at this situation or hears about the fact that with one month left, they're now kicking into overdrive and they're working six day work weeks and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like nobody looks at that and says, great. Yes. <laughs> work your ass off. All like, the fans nobody. probably look at it and they're excited that their game's on track yeah. because it's worth noting yeah. that the game has been delayed previously. Yeah. Right. Multiple so times. yeah. yeah. Um, it was originally announced like back in 2014. Yes. Somewhere around there. A yes. long time ago. Um, but yeah, it's this is definitely a it's it's an unfortunate situation. Uh obviously you gotta appreciate Jason Schreier's reporting here, especially considering that he was he'd received emails specifically where they said, like, hey, we're not gonna do this. This right. will yeah. not happen with our game. Um there are some there are some statements made, you know, uh, Adam Badowski, who I, I think you you know you were talking about how they were just in general mentioning that they were taking the blame and that they they ex like they understand the backlash that came from it. Um, but Adam Badowski, who's like the head of the studio, he put out a statement saying the last six weeks of our final sprint on the project, we've all spent most of most of our lives on something we care deeply for. The majority of the team understands that push, especially in light of the fact that we've just sent the game to cert and every day brings us visibly closer to shipping a game we want to be proud of. This is one of the hardest decisions I've had to make, but everyone is well compensated for every extra hour put in. And like in recent years, 10% of the annual profits that the company generates in 2020 will be split, split directly among the team. So it's not one of those situations where they're just like, they just have to crunch and that's it. Like at least they're being compensated for it. I don't think that justifies it still um it's it's still not good like crunch mm. is just it's just not a good thing you know it, and the it, more that it's yeah. brought to light the more that these reports start coming up for every game it's it's literally been every triple a game that yes. you know of yeah. has has faced this problem and i yeah. appreciate that it's starting to come to light more and more because yeah yeah we need to start getting away from it we need to start getting away from it it this is it's just not good well, and I feel like it's very prominent in the creative industry as a whole, whether it's gaming or animation um, right. or TV. Yep. It's like Film, because maybe. it's creative and people kind of see it as, well, you're doing your dream. Your hobby has become your job. Like that is the dream that you want. And what we fail to realize is that you still need that work-life balance because right. it does mm -hmm. become work. Like we all work in the gaming industry. We love games. We have a passion for games. That's why we pursued a career in gaming. Yep. But we do also have to make sure that we have that uh, balance between work and our life or else you go crazy, right? Like right. You, you can't function um, like this. And the fact that you have now this company or in gaming in general, um, specifically with CD Projekt Red, that's been so adamant ab about being progressive and not having crunch. Even how they are doing cyberpunk and being progressive in their games where you could pick your own gender. Um, mm -hmm. You could pick like your sex, you could pick any anything yep. you want as your character in, in this game. And yet they are kind of taking, to me, 10 steps back by pushing this half-hearted excuse that, Yes, we love this game. We've been working on this game forever. This is what's needed. But but in reality, it's not what's needed. We all know that with many games that have been set to release this year, that there will be challenges because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why they just didn't push out. We have to delay the game until yeah. next year. Um, and, yeah. and I feel like that's what they should have done at the beginning of the year when they, they announced the delay till uh, November. They mm -hmm. should have just announced a delay indefinitely until, or just in general till next year. If they, cause it's not like crunch, just you wake up one day and oh crap, the game's releasing <laughs> next month. We got a crunch. There are people on their team whose job is to make sure that the studio is on track for release. Yep. So for me, that is a huge oversight. It, it, it's kind of greedy. It's kind of, um, it, it's toxic. Because think of the people working in those studios who may have 
families, may not mm -hmm. have families, um, but may not be able to work under that pressure and find it so mm -hmm. stressful, regardless if the vast majority of their team agrees which I feel like that's so BS. Uh, There's agrees. so much pressure there, though. Because there is so have, much pressure. Yeah, because you can't and, be the one yeah. person that doesn't work the six day. Exactly, week. It, it, it builds animosity within the team, and I think yeah. CD Projekt Red. To be quite honest, if the game has already gone gold, I don't think they have enough fa enough faith in their fans and the people who support them to push the game out on time and say that to avoid crunch, we're going to put out a patch to fix known bugs and stuff later. I think fans would have been happy to get the yeah. game because it's been delayed for so long and then just say, we had to, we didn't want to crunch, we're going to put out patches for bugs and fixes later. Or, mm -hmm. like you said, just plan for it. it. It really feels like they didn't kind of... Obviously, COVID took everyone by surprise, but right. yeah. once everything started getting harder and harder, they should have prepared for it and they should have just gone indefinite with the date it's only going to hurt them to do this crunch and i i think it's causing yes. really bad pr leading mm -hmm. up to the release and if there are bugs with the game when it does release they're going to be judged harder for that because there was crunch it's mm -hmm. it's only going to hurt them on both ends no you're absolutely right i think you hit the nail on the head there um the covid situation like i'd have to imagine had had this year not gone the way that it did that there probably wouldn't have been a crunch. I mean, I, maybe. I completely disagree with that. I think I, I, I just think really? I just think that because of COVID, they certainly ran into like a full stop and and some serious challenges that they had to overcome. And that that's just like you gotta understand in, in the game development, there are, there are milestones you hit with yeah. each with each year, with each couple of months. And they have probably missed out on a couple of those milestones because of COVID. And I imagine that the adjustment period was tough for them. But regardless, the point being is that they should have delayed the game if it came down to this. I know that there would have been backlash from that. And, and there would have been a lot of memes of, well, this game just got delayed for the 1500th time. Um, and I understand that that is frustrating from a fan perspective. You just want the game. Like, Right. You, not, not a lot of people think about the fact that there are human beings and not robots and machines making yeah. the game and they don't just push big red button to make game yeah. like yeah. people, people <laughs> are working don't. that's how i thought hard. i know <laughs> uh people are working hard behind the scenes on this yeah. stuff and not a lot of fans recognize that and so all they see is it got delayed and it's gonna take longer for me to play the freaking game and they just get angry yeah. so i understand yeah. probably because of how many times they've already delayed it maybe because of how close they were they were like we gotta do this mm -hmm. but even so like for me i i don't care if they delayed it a whole nother year if that i really don't care yeah that, that nobody's yeah. got to work a six-day work week that nobody's got to sacrifice their mental health well, for yeah, my entertainment especially. Yeah. then yeah. that's fine by me you know i, I, I don't care it what it is it, the entertainment industry take as much time as you need all i'm getting out of it is entertainment yeah, yeah. It's, there's the escapism you know it could help with somebody like that people are very passionate about games and stuff like that and, and, it, and it helps them right but at the end of the day it's entertainment and mm -hmm. i know like nobody's mental health nobody's health needs to be sacrificed for my entertainment Ever. Especially in a yeah. year where it's been so um, eye-opening in terms of the toxic culture that is happening behind the doors of some of these studios. Sure. And it's been a highlight throughout the year. I feel like this is just a bad move. I don't know why. And I really don't understand why they wouldn't just wait to release the game next year. If they released yeah. it next year, they could also secure it for next gen as a launch day, a title, like launch the game on next gen. Mm -hmm. Instead, you have the game now releasing this year on current gen and then next year releasing on next gen. Plus, I, I'm, I can't help but think with all the buzz that Cyberpunk has got as like being this game that is going to like really shift gaming and it's getting all this praise before it's released. I yeah. feel like CD Projekt Red may be a little scared to release the game next year 
just because of all the releases that got pushed back um sure. and the yeah. the possibility yeah. you know like they have a lot more to a lot more competition sorry uh for next year that i feel like they do kind of want to to avoid so 2020 can be the year of cyberpunk mm -hmm. yeah i just i just really want cyberpunk to be good and it's like you said caboose i don't care if it takes another year yeah. and especially if it's if if it's for them because if these people are pushed to their mental limits and they're exhausted and they are suffering it's not going to be it's not going to be good for the game it doesn't look good on cj Pro cd project red and these people aren't going to be happy they're not going to why why would you want to push somebody who's pursuing something they love to overexert themselves for that yeah it just doesn't make sense you don't want to lose these people that have passions for making game changing video games you know industry breaking video games just because you wanted to get it out on a deadline it just doesn't mm -hmm. make sense to do it mm -hmm. and it, it it makes me question um how much pressure the team might have had uh before they reached this point have they kind of been pressured into working overtime right uh you know yeah. before they officially announced crunch is going to have to happen you know what I mean? Like, I feel like they might have already practiced some of this behavior of crunch and then had to put out a statement for fear of like bad PR if like one of their employees were to come out before the studio um, did. So so the anticipation, like, you know, they, they're they smart. They have their legal team. They have their PR mm -hmm. team to kind of make them look good that they are paying these people. I know Aang in chat mentioned that at least they're they're getting paid more yes it, it's great that they're getting bonuses for this sure. mm -hmm. but at the same time is this now working. what we yeah. they're yeah. still yeah. working a very stressful month if we give it to them yeah. that it, it's a month that they're yeah. pushing this crunch to which i'm pretty sure it, it was more than a month that they're doing this mm -hmm. um and that could be mentally taxing on any individual and it's just it's just like is that what we've come to it, it does this mean now with all of these cases crunch is inevitable no i don't it doesn't have so. to be it it, to it shouldn't be is yeah. the thing. but we unfortunately it's become the norm it's mm -hmm. it, it has become the norm every game has crunch yeah. Yeah, you look back at Naughty Dog with Last of Us Part Two. That was a big one. Uh, Rockstar yep. with Red Dead Redemption Two. Um, yep. Again, you brought it up before, Caboose. Like any AAA game, you go back to like whether you know it or not, probably did crunch. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. I think I think one thing that is interesting to all of this is that one has to kind of question exactly how much work still needs to be done on this game. If you if you break it down. By the time this game releases, it's only seven days of work extra. Like that's not a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like how yeah. like I, obviously I'm not a developer. I, I don't I don't know the first thing about what goes into making a game. But if if it came down to just pushing it even a week out or a month out, I'm sure they could have wrapped up what they need to be doing right now. Again, I, I could be totally I off base here. But um, I think yeah. it's the loss of money, right? Like think of all of, of the marketing that went into it, mm -hmm. all their partnerships, all their deals, yeah. toys, mer like merchandising, like all of that stuff is reliant on the release day because they have their plans uh, for how they're going to really market this game, sell products to people. And it's just unfortunate that crunch is pretty much a result of you have these business guys that are like well we need the product because we need mm -hmm. money and then you have yeah. the development team that is literally pushing this title on their backs um and they're just getting stomped on <laughs> by all their <laughs> senior staff and, and you you really would hope that studios do believe that crunch isn't essential but after all these stories this year i'm i'm really starting to think that this a lot of these studios are talking but not walking the walk of eliminating crunch yep yeah yeah and it starts at the top unfortunately it's, it uh, it's one of those things where as a developer um if it probably feels like you really just like you don't got too much say you yeah. know you, if you if you speak up on it you maybe have the the risk of losing your job um and and in part it's because uh throughout the industry it feels like this thing that is almost an obligation like if you're working yes. on this game you better at some point expect 
that you're going to either be working a six day work week or working overtime through the entirety of your five day work week, you know? And, and mm-hmm. that just, yeah. again, the more that stories like cyberpunk, like the last of us part two, like red dead redemption two, the more that those stories start coming to light, the more that people start reporting on this, although like, I have my disagreements with Jason Schreier and a little bit of his demeanor, but sure. regardless, the fact that he's still able to get this information, to gather this information, to put it out there, it, you know, it, it shakes things up and that's what we need. We need more of this so that when the next game comes along and the head of the studio starts to think, okay, we're going to, we're going to meet this deadline. Let's get to crunching. They maybe have to think twice about mm-hmm. that because of potential reports that could come out. And because of bad PR that could be coming towards the studio. Uh, yeah. I, I just, it, it's got to change. This stuff has got to change for the sake oh, yeah. of people's like health, for the and, sake yeah. of their well being. And I think from a community standpoint, like it's easy. I, I see it all the time. Like I think people often forget that people are behind those games, making those yes. games, yeah. spending hours at the studio making Cyberpunk instead of being with their family. And I think. The more people are cognizant about that, the more people can be vocal and say, well, okay, we don't need this game on November 19th. Like it can be pushed. It's not the end of the world. We can, we can wait. Unfortunately, I feel like the, you know, senior staff at a lot of these studios, the people making these decisions won't budge unless they start to see money flowing out of their Mm -hmm. pockets. And that comes from consumers. You know, if we, really do believe in this and you know if we see that there's a lot of abuse happening with a specific titles development um with the staff sorry on a specific titles development then you know let 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 us our voices be heard through our pockets (laughs) with your wallet exactly too there though is that it's hard because it is hard those people still put a lot of work into the game Mm -hmm. and to then boycott it and essentially just completely avoid that work that was put into the game makes them feel like they they did all it for nothing you're right that that is probably one of the only answers here is that even with all that crunch even with bad pr people still buy the games but yeah. the catch-22 the double-edged sword of it is that if you don't you make the the developers feel you know like they they did it all for nothing and that's it's tough it's a really tough situation um i guess the only thing we can do is just hope that more of these reports come to light and then more people start yelling about it and that more people voice their opinions rather than just staying silent. Um, And maybe as years go by, as more games release, we start to see a bit of a change. It's, it's, I, I mean, from where we're sitting in the positions that we're in, that's, that's the most we can do, which is, which is very difficult. And I, I feel for all the developers working on the game who are putting in the amount of work that they're putting. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's so hard to say anything except that it's just really unfortunate. Yeah. Um, so, I do want to, you, you well said, sorry, continue. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that crunch is something that is very prevalent in the film industry yes. and not so much with the actors, but more with the editors and the production crews and things like yep. that. So is the, just to kind of throw this question out there, because of something that has been so, you know, such a founding structure, a part of the film industry, do you think that that's going to kind of permeate into gaming and become, crunch is just going to become the new normal if we let it? Or do you think there's time to still disrupt that? I think there's time to disrupt it. Um, I think it will, it, we're very close. Well, it was normalized, right? Um, yeah. But because it's, being brought up in conversations a lot, especially this year, I feel like there's a chance here to really shift that. Um, We've seen, and you mentioned the film industry, that doesn't do well for all of the union workers in the film industry that continue to go on strike because they're being overworked and underpaid. Right. Um, So we, we don't want to experience that in gaming. So it's what we do. Uh, Aang and chat does ask as well. And I'm going to put this out to you guys. uh, Do we think that we'll ever see a boycott against crunch? No, I think, I think maybe you'll see developers go on strike sure. at some yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of a fan or community perspective, no. Yeah. 
correct me to, if I'm oh go go ahead. No, uh, I was just going to say to uh, to your point like I think there's enough people that don't even know this is going on that just yeah. go go into like an EB games or a yeah. Best Buy and they're like oh Cyberpunk's out cool I'm going to buy it not even mm-hmm. knowing that this game was announced in 2014 whatever and had this long drawn out development cycle crunch and all that no one knows about that like we're the people in tune with that sort of stuff but yeah un- unless like mainstream media picks this stuff up and starts getting that out on like the news i i, I don't see there being like a, a community backed uh, uh you know people aren't going to start uh, boycotting the yeah, game right yeah yeah, yeah. unfortunately <laughs> Yeah, but it, it's it's like what uh Kabu said earlier there there's two sides to this story um in terms of if you were to boycott uh who's being affected mm-hmm. um yeah. because these a lot of passion goes into these games so i hope for the future we don't see crunch but it's very likely that we will it's more up to us to decide um how much we'll stand for this so on that note, <laughs> let's move on. That was so different. To a much less controversial you know, topic. This is so no, it's not even controversial. Like that is just depressing crunch. Yeah. So I'm happy yeah. to move on a little bit. Uh, to- <laughs> Something I know Caboose is really excited to talk about. Look at him nerding out in the corner. Caboose, go right ahead. (laughs) Sort of excited, I guess. But also, (laughs) you know, there's there's a lot to talk about here. So if I can find the actual article. uh, Insomniac Games, just the other day, a couple of days ago, almost a week ago, essentially, at this point. um, They put out an article on a PlayStation blog that details and showcases the remastering of Spider-Man PS4 that'll be bundled with the ultimate edition of Spider-Man Miles Morales. Uh, They mention first, a couple of things to note is that you can get Miles Morales on PS4. You can upgrade for free with the game to PS5 and you have an option to get a $20 upgrade to get your hands on the remaster. That just sounds too convoluted for me, and I don't understand why they wouldn't just sell the remaster it. separately. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, wait, I need, I need like a Spark Notes for that. Is Spark Notes, Spark Notes even around? Do people even know what that is? Did I just I age know. myself there? No. Oh God! <laughs> but so they they showcased they showcased the bunch from the remastering. They showcased some of the ray tracing effects. They showed off some gameplay of the performance mode at 60 FPS, which looks glorious. It looks great. Um. But one of the biggest changes coming <laughs> to the remastering of Spider-Man PS4 is a complete redesign <laughs> of the actor who played Peter Parker in the game. The original actor who played him, his name was John Bubniak, and he's the one that they did the facial scans for. Then Yuri Lowenthal, the voice actor, is the one who did the performance capture. They've mm-hmm. now switched the actor. I believe his name is Ben Jordan. Mm-hmm. Um, and their, their essential reasoning behind this Uh, as they mentioned, is because of the fact that the actor who played Spider-Man originally, or played Peter Parker originally, his facial bone structure did not match that of Yuri Lowenthal's. And so it made it, I'm assuming in the breaking down of this, and from what they tried to explain, I'm assuming the problem they faced was trying to match Yuri's motion capture performance to that of the face model of John Bubniak. And they were maybe running into some challenges there, although it just didn't seem like that when we actually see the performance in the game. Uh, And so they switched the actor to somebody whose uh, face and bone structure (laughs) matches that more of Yuri Lowenthal. Uh, and there's been there's been a bit of outrage. Uh, there's there's been quite a bit. It's of, horrible. Of <laughs> um, I yeah, I mean, he just he looks a lot younger. The actor yeah. that they got to play Peter Parker now, but I think the problem is not even just that the actor himself looks younger. It's just that the way that they had created the design in game. Like if you yeah. look at pictures of the actor, it looks like he could very much work as a Peter Parker. I, sure. I think. Yeah. They they could very much, and I think a lot of the problem for me 
comes with the hair. Uh, it's oh, just yeah. there's, there's something about John Bubniak and, and the original actor. It's always and, like, the hair. He just looks a little messier. He looks a little like worn yeah. down. He looks like he's been Spider Man for eight years. You know, like yeah. that's exactly the kind of vibe that you get out of the original actor. And I just don't get enough of that out of this new one. I will say though, you know, some of the developers, um, Brian Intahar, who's like the game director who worked on Spider Man PS4. He came out and and was mentioning how like people are people are saying some really outlandish stuff over this. They were sending like death threats and and saying like oh I'm gonna hunt you down things like that. And it's like it's just it's just never that serious, you know. Yeah. I think for me at the end of the day, as much as I disagree with this decision, and as much as I feel any money spent on getting a new actor and creating a new design could have just been spent facing whatever challenges they were with the original design mm -hmm. uh i'm not uh, like i'm not gonna attack any developers over this this is this is not my game to make this is yeah. their yeah. this yeah. is their baby yeah. uh, exactly. as much as as much as it's up to the fans to buy the game and then make it a success they are the ones who made a good game you know yeah. they are the ones yeah. who did something that was as spectacular as spider-man ps4 and so if they think that this is the right decision to make, even if I disagree with it, I have no choice but to respect it. And this is the way that it's going to be going forward. They're not going to go back to the original design. When they make a Spider-Man 2, when they're probably going to have Peter Parker and Spider-Man Miles Morales, it will be this actor. It'll be yeah. this design. And I think, uh, at least for me, we'll see at least, uh, when I play through Spider-Man PS4, like the remaster, when I play through it top to bottom again, I'll probably by the end of it be used to this new actor. Yes. And it'll it'll yeah. feel like yeah. normal eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but of course, just at face value, when you play a game, when you become so attached to a character, and especially with honestly what looked like a really good performance, uh, you <laughs> yeah, just, I don't it's understand. jarring. It's jarring it, to see the change. Especially because this game is, to me, so recent. Um, yeah. Like I don't, I don't understand why. Why <laughs> I, I'm not. Yeah. You know, obviously, I don't uh, support anyone who's being toxic to and like just threatening and just overreacting. Like PlayStation fanboy and girls, calm down, okay? <laughs> it's not that serious. There will yeah. be Miles Morales, and then you guys could be happy about that and forget about Peter yeah. Parker. Like, there's so many other things in the world mm -hmm. to be upset about. Like, you don't need to be making the gaming world more toxic. We we deal enough with that. So I'm just mm -hmm. going to look at this from a complete perspective as a fan, someone who played uh, the previous game and going into this one. I just don't understand why they made this decision. <laughs> like, it makes yeah. no no yeah. sense to me i i want i okay my theory ready for <laughs> theories i always have a theory. i love okay. theories Let's okay this guy looks very the new actor looks very mm -hmm. similar yeah. to tom holland yeah he really does he is does. that a coincidence or is no. that smart no. marketing i don't think smart that's marketing. a coincidence i think it yeah. is you think, think it is when did, when did tom holland show up as spider-man like what do you like, mean? Uh, like 2016. 2016. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, and then his own movie in 2017, correct? Yeah, I yeah. believe so. Uh, that yeah. that the kid was a phenomenon as Spider Man since before Spider Man PS4 came out, uh, and I feel like if Disney was going to mandate it, they would have mandated it for the first game. You know, I, I think this is genuinely mm. just Insomniac. Think, uh, no, okay. Let me continue with here. my theory here. Okay. Continue. <laughs> All right. So I've had this long lasting theory, especially with the uh, MCU news that kind of came out with Electro and all this stuff that they're doing uh, into the Spider-Verse live action kind of deal with Tom Holland. Okay. We'll talk about that later. What if, okay, <laughs> Spider-Man PlayStation for Spider-Man is in the MCU movie Into the Spider-Verse as a cameo, not fully, but I'm just saying it's a possibility. You guys stick with it. I, I don't need to okay. hear uh, your theories after that. The I'm, reason I'm that it doesn't work is because then they'd have to ADR any line he yes. potentially has with Yuri Lowenthal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just, 
that just wouldn't work. Uh, I, I completely, you, your, your tinfoil had it hard on that one, Camille. I, I, uh, I left my tinfoil hat in the other room, so I can't even put that on to, but I do, um, you know, I do think this is, I, I really do believe this may be some marketing that we may not even fully understand. It's just weird that he looks so similar to Tom Holland. Like that cannot be a coincidence. It cannot yeah, be you. I, I think, think it is. Well, to Honestly. your point, I know that you said no theories, but I'm going to toss out my theory anyways. Yes, okay, all right. <laughs> um, because I, I do agree that I think that it, if it's not a coincidence, it, it, it's a little weird. It's a little <laughs> weird. Um, but to Caboose's point where uh, the timelines don't match up because Tom Holland was cast really early on and everything, I really, this whole thing smells of like contractual disagreements uh, where the original... Um, uh, model of uh, actor piece. yeah he mm -hmm. probably his contract probably just didn't line up with what insomniac games wanted to uh do moving forward because i mean they have yeah. miles morales which obviously peter parker's going to be a part of another sequel uh, i just feel like at that point they decided to cut ties with him and then probably sat in a boardroom and said well, okay well we need, need to find a replacement this guy kind of looks like tom holland why not use him yeah because that's, they, that's potentially true. Uh, that that there could have been a a bit of a dispute him. from not it couldn't have, it couldn't even be scheduling because they have his facial scan and so like once you have yeah. it you have it. Right? Yeah, but yeah. but if um, they're shooting if they're shooting new like the new game right like. But he's not the one who does the motion capture performance. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, but so, they would still. But even if he's not the one doing the motion capture, they may still shoot his face doing other things specific for the game like Maybe. so they they will align yeah. like they won't just use that still that same facial scan um for like if there's five spider-mans they will still bring in the actor to update anything especially as graphic capabilities go which we know i guess we don't know for sure because this whole like using an actor for a game is something that's still pretty mm -hmm. new yeah mm -hmm. Um, and you have to imagine that just because they have the scans for one game doesn't mean that Insomniac owns that moving forward, like forever. Like I, you I, have to assume but, that but they have to. You, it's a Marvel game. terms, right? Because if, yeah, if, then, if it's all no, under the umbrella of, it. of like Marvel <laughs> Studios and stuff, like they don't they don't pick someone and and on a on a one like game to game basis or like movie that, to movie basis. That's very fair. No, no, you're, no, no. You're but right. I, I get what yeah, you're okay. saying, Caboose, but then I understand, like Steve, like Forchie said in chat, you're you're smart cookie there. They don't, I don't think, own the rights to that that facial scan for other properties outside of PS4, Marvel's uh, Spider-Man, oh, right? Mm -hmm. So if there's PS5, Marvel's Spider-Man 2, they would have to probably pay him more right uh to use his facial scan if they're going to use the same ones or that would have been included in the deal which i doubt it um so so i feel like you're onto something there steve i wouldn't i i doubt i do that like i i don't think that there wouldn't be a clause in the contract that says like hey like we can use this now <laughs> like this is your yeah. your faith yeah. is ours you know, yeah. like, I, I i don't i don't see how there wouldn't be i don't see how they wouldn't want to cover themselves like that because that you you don't make a Spider-Man game like especially with what Marvel Games was trying to do when mm -hmm. that Spider-Man game was coming out and like like their mantra their new mantra about getting involved in games there's no way you do that without the idea of like we're going to franchise the hell out of this like there's yeah. there's no way Marvel Games' approach from the get-go was we're going to make one game and wrap this up they knew yeah. that this was going to be a good game they yeah. knew that they were going to make at least more than one and now that it became as massive of a success as they did, or as it as it was, then now they got to dabble and play a little bit, a little bit, and do something like a Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is its own like spin-off game involving a whole nother character. Uh, I do want to yeah. quickly mention so, as well one other thing. Sorry, Malik, to to cut no, you off. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to mention one thing before we get to you, what you're going to say here. In that included as well in the remaster, uh, and this might come to PS4. They haven't communicated this yet, but. We know for sure included in the remaster is three new suits. Mm. Uh, and one of them is the amazing Spider-Man suit from the first Andrew Garfield film. And oh my God. It uh -huh. Really? It yeah. looks amazing. Uh, I'll throw it into the discussions really if you want to see it, Camille. But go ahead, Malik. 
Uh, I was just going to say that I'm not saying this. Um, she's got me hooked on the conspiracies now, but it could be possible. <laughs> <Michael>. <laughs> it could be possible that they want to build the Spider-Man universe out, and yeah. so maybe shifting the remaster t- for him to look a little bit younger opens the door for a future yes. Miles Morales type game where it's an older Spider-Man. Because they did do that in Into the Spider Verse, mm-hmm. it was younger Miles Morales, and the Spider Man that visited him was much older, out of right. the game. You know, they they could be trying to shift it so they create generations of Spider Man, kind of give that visual representation. But at the same time, like Ooh. you said, it doesn't align with the story, so it doesn't make that much sense to change out the face of the actor if you're yeah. just doing a remaster. It seems like a lot of effort to go yeah. into doing a minimal amount of quality change. All right. This just in, we have someone in chat who um, works in the gaming industry hmm. with, you know, studios and stuff. They said <laughs> contractually a remake or remaster is a new property, which means new money, new money, mm. new contract. So that's what I'm saying. Cause when you sign contracts, it's, for specifically a property it wouldn't be all of spider-man like even when you're looking at the avengers and those actors they may sign a multi-year deal but it's still just for the avengers or for black widow or whatever their character is right so that's why i think maybe it's a scheduling issue maybe it is the fact that you know marketing to a younger audience or maybe marketing to an audience that's familiar with tom holland knowing that they're going to be releasing games um that coincide with spider-man movies that may have nothing to do with each other in story (laughs) but come out see in you know timing close to each other that that makes more money for them to sell it's easier for them to market those properties this this is just this is tough again because we haven't seen something like this where you know we there's been a facial scan of an actor for something and it's a reprising role you know we haven't really seen that before um and so that's why again i i just for me from what i understand and the way that it seems it it wouldn't feel like they would need him back in the studio again to do a facial scan you know it, it would maybe like i would agree with uh with steve that maybe it's a contractual disagreement like maybe he saw the massive success john bubniak saw the massive success of spider-man ps4 and was like Oh, you're making a remaster? <laughs> you know, yeah, like may- yeah. <laughs> maybe, but maybe. um, but in terms of like like scheduling conflicts or anything like that, I I can't imagine. First of all, like no disrespect. To the oh my god! Don't Spider-Man, even say it. Don't even but say I, it. I can't imagine his schedules that stacked. <laughs> uh, let alone that he would be putting anything in front of Spider Man. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. And and so I, I'm not sure if that was the case. I genuinely do believe that it was in regards to what the reasoning that Insomniac provided. Uh, I I honestly think that they were just telling the truth and I don't like it. I don't think it was still necessary. Um, I also don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Who knows? Because they'd had to make this change or had made this change after they realized like halfway through the development of Spider-Man PS4 that the original actor they got and the performance capture that was done by Yuri Lowenthal it's just not matching up and it created a lot of challenges for them maybe yeah. um yeah. and and that's But the wouldn't only you just wait till the second game to do the update like why would you do this in the remastered <laughs> I, version I think it's honestly a good idea to you do think it it's in the better to introduce it instead of the second game because at oh, least yeah. this is now the same game that they're re-releasing with the new actor so that okay. people can play through it again with the new actor to then get used to it for the second game and you're treating uh, like yeah. that PlayStation 5 release as like a blank slate. Like moving forward yeah, from yeah. the get-go from PlayStation 5, you're looking at this new actor. You're looking at this is the new Peter Parker. Mm-hmm. You guys think of... Yeah. I, I just don't think it warrants that much backlash though at the end. Oh, right? absolutely not. No, no. Oh, absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah. Absolutely not. Uh, but it, it is great that we're hearing more about the behind the scenes, like with actors being used in games yeah for uh their not just motion capture but also just their acting chops for Mm -hmm. uh their screen cap like their spatial scans Mm -hmm. um so i hope like if this is an instance of like trying to figure out contractually how an actor is used in a video game maybe we'll see more developments into it because now this is just showing like 
as we use actors or as the gaming industry uses actors for things outside of voice and outside of motion cap, contracts could get a lot more complicated if that is the reason yeah. with this situation. Um, so I, I can't wait to hear more of stories like this uh, coming up because then more theories will be coming from this mine. You better believe More it. More tinfoil hats right away. Hey, yeah. not tinfoil hats, but uh, since you mentioned it, I'm going to get my tinfoil hat and we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> we'll be right back.